Psalms chapter 55, Don, uh, David's writing this psalm. It's called a psalm of David, and uh, it's got music to it. Uh, I don't know the music to it, but all the psalms has got music to it. But David's writing this uh, psalm. In verse 1, he says, Give ear to my prayer, O God. Hide not thyself from my supplication. Attend unto me, and hear me, and I mourn in my complaint, and make a noise. Because of the voice of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked, for they cast iniquity upon me, and in wrath they hate me. My heart is sore pained within me, and the terrors of death are fallen upon me. Fearfulness and trembling are come upon me, and horror hath overwhelmed me. And I said, Oh, that I had the wings like a dove, for then would I fly away and be at rest. Lo, then would I wander afar off, remain in the wilderness, Selah. I would hasten my escape from the windy storm and tempest. Destroy, O Lord, and divide their tongues. For I have seen violence and strife in the city. Day and night they go about it upon the walls thereof. Mischief also and sorrow in the midst of all of it, or midst of it. Wickedness is in the midst thereof. Deceit and guile depart not from her streets. For it was not an enemy that reproached me, then I could have bore it. Neither was he that did that hated me that did magnify himself against me, then I would have hid myself from him. But it was thou, a man, mine equal, my God, mine acquaintance. We took sweet counsel together, walked in the house of God and company. Let death seize upon them, let them go down quick into hell, for wickedness is in their dwellings and among them. As for me, I will call upon God, and the Lord shall save me. Evening, morning, and noon will I pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. He hath delivered my soul in peace from the battle that were against me, for there were many with me. God shall hear and afflict them, even he that abideth of old, Selah. Because they have no changes, therefore they fear not God. He hath put forth his hands against such as be at peace with him. He hath broken his covenant. The words of his mouth are smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. Cast thy burdens upon the Lord, and he shall abstain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. But thou, O God, shall bring them down to the pit of destruction. Bloody and deceitful men shall not live out half their days, but I will trust in thee. I don't really know what all was going on in David's life when he wrote this song. Could have been a lot of things that's going on in his heart and his life when he wrote this stuff. There's a lot of things he could think about. One thing was Absalom. Absalom had rose up against him, his own son at this time. I'm sure that was weighty on his heart to have his own son rise up against and try to take the king away, kingdom away. And then the Abathar that was with David and uh, down here that was an acquaintance of him, he rose up and he stood with Absalom and he kind of betrayed David. That could have been a real distress in David's life. Uh, just the fact that somebody that had... Uh, that he went to the house of God with, the Bible said, and was very good acquaintances, has rose up against him. And how we all know how that feels, especially as a pastor. You know how that feels sometimes, people that you worship with, and then things rise up. It could have been, it could have been his remembrance of his sin that he had done with Bathsheba and the sin of adultery. could have been the fact of the baby he lost. And, and a lot of things that could be going on in David's heart and life that brought him to this place. It brought him to this place where he is. And I'm going to take a text out of verse 6, and then I'm going to give you three things. Leave your Bible open, I'll give you three things. Verse 6, David said, Oh, that I had the wings of a dove, for then I would fly away and be at rest. If I had a text, it would be something better than the wings of a dove. David said, If I had the wings of a dove, I'd just fly and get away. But I want to tell you something better than the wings of a dove. First of all, I'll talk about David's distress. Look in verse 1 down through verse number 5. David says in verse number 1, Give ear to my prayer, O God. What he said in that verse, God, if you've ever heard me, uh, if you've ever turned a listening ear to me, uh, if you've ever paid attention to anybody, give ear to my prayer, O God. You ever been to that place that you're just so desperate? <laughs> Whatever you are going through, Whatever that might have been financially, it might have been spiritually, it might have been family problems, whatever, sickness or whatever. But you got to the place that you were so distressed and so disturbed that you said, God, if you've ever 
If you've ever heard a prayer, if you've ever paid attention, David is not messing around. He said, give ear to my prayer. And Lord, turn a listening ear. He wasn't just repeating the prayer. He's praying. He's even got that, oh, God. And he said, hide not thyself from my supplication. In other words, he said, if you've ever shown yourself to anybody, I want you to show yourself to me. You ever been that desperate? You ever been that distressed? You ever been so loaded down that you were so desperate in God, you just prayed out, God, if you've ever paid attention to anybody, if you've ever looked on anybody, if you've ever, if you've ever made yourself known to anybody, you know, sometimes we pray to seem like heaven's brass. Sometimes we pray and it just seems like it just hits the ceilings and comes back down. And it seems like that we're praying and we're praying and God's got to hit himself. He's not revealed himself. You know, it's kind of like talking to somebody and ain't paying no attention to you. <laughs> Amen? Uh, I, I, I've got a couple of eye surgeries coming up and I, I was telling my boy last night uh, uh, about it and he's having some gall about trouble and he's telling me about it here. and I said well I said I've got a couple of eye surgeries coming along and I was to tell him about it and everything and he's looking around he wouldn't pay the least attention to me and, and then he called me today coming up the road was telling me about his gall butter stuff and I said uh, I said well uh, I said uh, next week I said I've got this little eye surgery going on and he said well when did that come about <laughs> I thought, man, I told you last night. Uh, and I said, you know, it's hard. You can tell when somebody ain't paying attention because they're looking over yonder and waving over here, you know. And, and, and that's the way David feels in his birth. He feels like he's a talking, he's crying out to God, but it seemed like God ain't no paying no attention to him. But he said, God, if you've ever, if you have ever paid attention to anybody, if you've ever turned to anybody, give me a listening ear. You ever been there? <laughs> And then the Bible said in that verse number two, he said, attend unto me and hear me. He said, not only do I want you to hear me, I want you to do something about it. Right. <laughs> I want you to take care of this. I want you to solve this. I want you to straighten this out. Uh, whatever David's going through, he said, I don't, don't want you to hear me. I want you to do something about it. It's kind of like going to the doctor, you know. You go to the doctor sometime, and you got problems, and you try and tell him, and you don't want to do this. Well, we'll try this. I think, man, I don't want you to try nothing. I want you to help me. Amen. Uh, I told my doctor last time I went, uh, he told me, he said, well, we're going to try this. I said, I said, how do you know that's going to work? I said, you ain't done no tests. You ain't nothing. You're just using your brain, and I ain't trusting it too much. I said, why don't you run some tests and see what's wrong with it so you can fix it? You know, sometimes uh, we don't want just a quick fix. We want God to solve the problem and help us. And that's where David is. He said, I just want you to hear me. I want you to attend unto me, hear me. And then he said, I mourn in my complaint and make a noise. That word mourn means David's past words. David is past words. He's trying to pray, and he can't pray. He can't put his prayer into words. Uh, you ever been so troubled, so heavy, going through something, whatever you may be going through? You ever been to that place when you get down to pray, you can't even find words to say? All you can do is just moan before God. I, I've been that way before. I've been carrying loads before. And, and uh, just, uh, be, just, Brother Jordan, be so burdened. You get out on your knees to pray, and you can't say nothing. You just say, oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. I've done that before. Just 30 minutes. Just, oh, God. Moan before God. And, and can't find the word to say what you need and what you want to say and what you need from God. And David said, I'm more than my complaint. God, I've got something going on in my life. I've got to have help. I've got to do something about it. And I don't even know how to tell you what's wrong with me. I don't even know how to put it in words. I mean, he, he is so burdened. He's mourning in his complaint. Amen. Uh, I probably told this before, but years ago when Lexi was just a little old bitty thing, uh, I was going through a heavy thing and pastoring and going through some personal things and, and, and I, my office at the house and, 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 and my wife, I told my wife, I said, I'm going to my office, don't bother me. Yeah. And I went in there and shut the door. Yeah. And I got in there uh, and I got to pray and, and, and I just laid down in the floor, flat on my face. And I, I was crying out to God. And I got past words yeah. and I just laid there and moaned. And I just said, oh God. Yeah. That's all I could say was, oh God. Yeah. And Lexi come in the kitchen to told the case. He said, what's wrong with Papa? And she said, well, Papa's going through a burden, and Papa's got a lot of things going on. He's just trying, he's just under a heavy load, and don't be bothering Papa. And well, she said, we well, sound like he's dying. And, and, and it wasn't long, I heard the door open, Brother Jordan, and little old Lexi slipped in there where I was at. I didn't even pay no attention to her. I just kept praying, holding my heart out to God. She got down beside me, and I'd say, oh God! And she'd say, oh God! 
God. And I said, oh. And she'd go, oh. I looked at her and said, what are you doing? And she said, I was doing what you're doing. I said, well, keep it up. We got to get some help. We got to get through. And sometimes, brother, we're so burdened. We don't have the words to say. We're going through things we can't even tell nobody. And we can't even find words to tell God. That's where David's at. David said, I mourn in my complaint. Then he says, because of the voice of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked, for they cast a nickel upon me, and wrath, and wrath, they hate me. He said, God, I'm going through that. The enemy has rose up against me. The lady sung about Satan rising up against us. Sometimes Satan rises up against us. Sometimes uh, the world rises up against us. Sometimes uh, people rise up against us and come against us, and, and it causes us sorrow. It causes hardship. Sometimes our own family rises up against us and we have to carry the loads and we don't know what to do and then David said verse number 4 my heart his sore pain within me the terrors of death are fall upon me fearless and trembling are come upon me horror hath overwhelmed me David said I am overwhelmed with this thing you ever just get overwhelmed you know finances sometimes overwhelm you amen you ever get down in finances you, 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 you'll be overwhelmed uh, my my son, my oldest son, and and, and we was talking last night, and, and uh, he'd been struggling and and some financially, and and uh, a lot of things that was going on in his life, and he'd been struggling, and and, and he got a, finally got his car paid off, and and he read on his house, and he's saving two hundred dollars a month on his house payment, and and, and he said, Tom, last night, brother Slick, he said something about getting a truck. I looked at him, I said, Don't you buy no truck? Uh, I said, You just now, you just now got what you can breathe. Uh, just because you got two hundred dollars a month extra, why are you gonna get you a truck? I said, You you got out from under it, you've been crying, you've been begging to get out from under it, and here you are trying to go back, and sometimes finances will put us in a place uh, that we kills us spiritually physical problems, family problems, whatever the problems is. David says, it's my heart is sore pain within me. You know, it's one thing for it to be out yonder. In verse number, in verse number two, three, it's out yonder. The voice of the enemy out there. But you know, that's another thing when it gets in here. Uh, I've told this, but years and years ago, my, my mother-in-law right there in the area where they lived at that time there in Newport, uh, uh, there was people breaking in houses all around. All around that little area there, there was people breaking in the house. I said, and my mother-in-law, uh, she said, I tell you what, uh, I said, this is awful. I said, our neighborhood, uh, hey, you know, but she said, I ain't lost no sleep over it. Uh, hey, and I can hear her now say that. Uh, and she said, boy, I tell you, I hate it they got broken into. And I hate it they got broken into. And it wasn't long, but slick. Uh, my friend, somebody come through their basement window, uh, come up their basement steps. Uh, and my friend, it was no longer the neighbor down the road. Uh, it was in her own house. Uh, and you know what? She said, I can't even sleep no more. Uh, I'm all to serve. You know what? It was no longer out yonder. It was inside. And you know, we can handle that stuff out yonder. But when that stuff gets on the inside, that, that burden we're carrying, that pressure we're coming, that distress, that defeat, that, that disturbance in our life gets on the inside. It's a different story. And David said, God, it was out yonder. Now it's on the inside. And I'm overwhelmed with this thing. So you see David's distress. David, his, his desires to hear from God. He desires to be attended to. He desires because of the enemy. He desires because on the inside, he is broken on the inside of his own heart. So we see David's distress. But then number two, we see David's desire. Look in verse number five, six. Mr. David's distress. You know what he said? He said, and I said, Oh, that I had the wings like a dove, for then I would fly away and be at rest. Lo, that I would farther afar off and remain in the wilderness. I would hasten my escape from the windy storm. Notice that word. David said, I said, I had the wings of a dove. If I fly, if I would, I would wander, or I would hasten my escape. I tell you, if I could have the wings of a dove, he said, I tell you what I would do. You know, sometimes we get those so distressed, we lose sight of everything, and all we want to do is say, well, I'm telling you what I am going to do. <laughs> This, if I had, David said, if I had the wings of a dove, he said, I'll tell you what I'd do. He said, I'd flap them away. David's desire and a way out. He said, if I had the wings of a dove, he said, I'd just fly my wings and I'd leave it. You ever feel like, you ever feel like if you could just change towns? <laughs> Come on, help me out. <laughs> and we said, I'm going to move to South Carolina. I'm going to move to North Carolina. I'm going to move somewhere. <laughs> Don't go that way. <laughs> go this way. 
<laughs> nobody wants to go move to Ohio. You know, excuse me, y'all, you people from Ohio. Amen. Uh, I ain't never heard nobody say, I tell you what I'm doing. I'm so distressed. I'm going to go to Ohio. I ain't, I ain't got nothing against Ohio. And, and, and I'm in trouble right here, okay? But uh, I forgot how close I was to the, the, to the Ohio line. Amen. Uh, uh, but, you know, uh, uh, somebody said, boy, if I could just change towns, if I could just change jobs, if I could just change churches. Sometimes we think, if I could just change pastors. <laughs> Sometimes pastor says, if I just change people. <laughs> if I could just change wives, change husbands, change children, change parents, change... If I, just change, if I could just go somewhere, get away from all this crap. You ever feel that way? I guarantee somebody right here felt like a... I tell you what we need to do, babe. We need to visit around and change church. Well, go ahead and change church. You'll mess that up when you get over. <laughs> if you find a perfect church, don't join it. You'll mess it up. Amen. Changing churches ain't the answer. Amen. They got the same problems over there. If you go to, if you go to church like faith, you're going to preach the same book, preach the same things. Amen. Come on now, help me out. If I can just change it. I had a woman told me one time, she said, preacher, if I can just change husbands. That's what she told me. She said, in my office. She said, said I, I, we don't get along. You know, it, it just ain't working. And they divorced. And it wasn't long. She found her another man. And, and she was married about a year. I seen her. I said, well, how's things going? She said, you told me right, preacher. I said, I forgot what I told you. She said, she told me, if I got a new man, his socks is going to stink just like the first one did. That's what I told her. She said, he does. <laughs> changing, <laughs> changing companions. That ain't the answer. Changing churches. Changing jobs. That's what David said. David said, look at it. He said, if I had, if I had the wings of a dove, I'd fly away. I'd just flap my wings. I'd wander afar off. And I'd remain in the world. I'd find me somewhere. There wasn't nobody. I'd just be by myself. You feel that way? First time me and Kay went to Branson, I told her, I said, let's go to Branson, Missouri. I never preached in Missouri at that time. I have now, but I didn't have at that time. I said, don't nobody know us in Branson. And we wasn't going to do nothing mean. I just didn't want to be around. Nobody knows me. We went to Branson. Drove out there 12 hours. Got some motel, got up the next morning. Went out to breakfast, the little breakfast thing, and sitting there eating breakfast. And this high guy hollered, what, preacher? What are you doing up here? I said, go home. I don't want to see you. <laughs> I came up here to get away from you. I don't even want to see you. Uh, you say, what are you saying? I was trying to get along. I was just trying to get away. And there was somebody. Yeah. You know what? My friend, that's the way it is. Sometimes we feel like if I could just get along, if I could just go somewhere by myself, if I could just move off and don't nobody know me from nowhere, if I could just escape, if I could just flap my way. And David said, if I want to run away, I want to get out of here. I want to leave everything and just be along. If I had the wings like a dove, I'd just fly away and be at rest. I told this before, but I remember F.M. Blevins in Newport. That's I was just a kid, still home. Man. And F.M. Blevins had a boy that was, uh, he was pastoring there in the same town daddy was, and he had a son that had got to drinking and uh, causing a lot of problems, and, and he was breaking the pastor's heart. Brother Blevins had just broke his heart. And his son, he'd raised him up in church, and now he's a drinking and causing all kinds of problems. And, and he told my dad, he said, Brother Roy, he said, You know, I've been going through all this with my son. He said, I thought I'd buy me a ticket to the Holy Land. He said, I bought me a ticket to the Holy Land. Just wanted to get away from everything. He said, I got on the plane, flew 10,000 miles to Jerusalem. He said, I got off the plane in Jerusalem. He said, I went up there and found my motel. He said, the first night when I laid down in the bed, 10,000 miles away from home, guess what? He said, my problems went with me. My boy, the burden, the thoughts of my son went all the way over with me. I was trying to get away. I'll tell you what, run where you want to run, but your problems is going to go with you. If I run you disturbance, you your trouble, you can't. It's like the old westerns, you know. They shoot, shoot somebody, and they'll say, tell their little wife, I'm out of here. I'm going to run. I'm not going to jail. And you know what? They'll say, well, if you ever start running, you just have to keep running and keep running. If you ever start running away from your problems, if you ever start running away from what's going on, You'll keep be still, be running. <laughs> why people? Ch that's why some people change church so much. Instead of getting right with God, where there's at, they run over here. They ain't happy over there. They run over here to another church. Some some churches. For some people, you don't ask them. You don't ask them how their church is doing. You ask them where they're going now. And they have a church in town. 
Worst place in the world, South Carolina. You go around South Carolina, Greenville, and Easy, you don't ask people how their church is doing. You ask them where they're going now. They've been in every church in the county. You know what they're doing? They're running, trying to find help, trying to find peace. Some people change jobs. Every time they get a job, you know, it don't work. I know somebody like that right now. I won't call their name because we're probably on live stream. I get in trouble on this live stream stuff. <laughs> when I start preaching, they didn't have all this stuff. You can just say whatever you want to say. You just call people what they are. Amen. But can't do that no more. Uh, but I know a lady right now, she's she, she got a job. She, and she, she wasn't happy with that job. She said, I don't want to work. I also want to be home with the kids. Said, well, the husband let her home, go home and stay with the kids. Said, and she didn't, but then last 30 days, she didn't like to take her kids all the time. She won't go back to work. So we went back to work, and now she wants to quit again. I, th- I told her, I said, you know, you ain't happy with nothing. I said, you need to make up your mind somewhere. My friend, what you going to do and find peace with God? Quit running and try to change jobs and change this and change that. And my friend David said, if I had the wings of a dove, I'd just run. I'd fly. And you know what? If you ever done that, you just keep running and you keep flying and you keep running. Somewhere you got to face the reality. You know what David wanted the wings of a dove? Look this up. A, a, a dove is the only bird that can fly with one wing. You can fly with two wings or one wing. In other words, Slick can't just flap both of them and fly. If he gets tired, Brother Jordan, he can rest that and fly this. One. When that gets tired, he can rest that and just fly that. Then he can fly with both. In other words, he can just keep flying and flying and flying and keep flying. And you know what? My friends, some people desire that. They just want to keep running and running and running and running and they're seeking peace and finding none. David's desire was just get out from under, get away, take it. I'll tell you what. Then let me give you this third thing. Not only David's distress, verse 1 through 5, verse 6 down through about verses number 15 is David's desire. But look in David's discovery. In verse number 16, David said, As for me, I will call upon God. The Lord shall save me. Evening, morning, and noon, I will pray and cry aloud. He shall hear my voice. He hath delivered my soul into peace from the battle that was against me. For there were many. Cast thy burden upon the Lord. He shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. My friend Riley, hey, listen. David said, I'm distressed. My desire is to run and flee. But you know what he discovered? I don't have to run. Thank God I can go and call on God and the Lord. Lord shall sustain me. You know what that word means? He said, the Lord will help me. He discovered he had a throne room. Jordan mentioned a while ago, we got a throne room we could run to. We got an altar we could run to. David asked for me. David, God, he realized calling on God was the avenue out. <laughs> Amen. I remember years ago, I, I think I come up here during that time. My, my son, when he was smaller, he had a fishbowl. I had one fish in it. Came on me to clean the fishbowl. I said, that ain't my fish. And uh, I said, when we bought that fish, the agreement was he had to clean the bowl and take care of the fish. I said, why are we cleaning it and fight taking it for him? I said, flush it down and come old. That's what I told her. Amen. But anyway, I was a good dad. Went in there and got that fishing bowl and got the fish out, you know, put in a little old cup. And I, was in there, and I dropped that fishing bowl. A fishing bowl on my foot didn't have no shoes on and it cut my toe cut my toe and uh, I mean it laid it open pretty good and in case you don't go to the doctor I said no I ain't got to go to the doctor I'm leaving for a meeting I got to go I wrapped it up the best way I could that thing swelled up <laughs> it swelled up a good I, in fact I ended up going to the store got me a pair of house shoes cut the end out of them and I preached in the house shoes for a solid week I preached in the house shoes because I couldn't get my other shoes on Everybody said, you need to go to the doctor. I think that swell up. You need to go to the doctor. I had to go to the doctor. It'll be all right. I poured stuff on it, done everything I could think about doing it. Finally, it got so bad, I put up with it two weeks. My wife kept saying, you need to go to the doctor. You need to go to the doctor. I said, I ain't going to the doctor. I don't even like doctors. If you're a doctor here, I like you, but I don't like doctors. <laughs> Amen. And I said, I ain't going. And then, you know, I got in the motel one time. And I got me a, I went over there, uh, Slick got me a pack of razor blades, and I laid it open. Stuff run out everywhere. It, I thought, man, that'll help it. That'll be good. <laughs> time I got home, it swelled up, looked worse, affected. I got home, I couldn't hardly walk. I, I told my wife, I said, I guess I'm going to go to the doctor in the morning. And I went up there, and she got me a appointment. I went over to the doctor, and the doctor came in there. And this, this is funny. Went over from my foot. You know what his name was? Dr. Foot. I told him, I said, man, how in the world did you get a foot doctor? Amen. But, but anyway, I laid my foot up like that, and I said, I dropped the fishbowl in there. And I said, I've been a working on it. He said, I can tell. 
I can tell, he said, you've been working on it. I wonder sometimes when we come to God, God can tell. We've been trying to straighten our own life out and our own problems out. He said, oh, let me, let me check it out. And he stuck a little thing down there, Brother Jordan, and he went, Kruh! he said, you got a piece of glass in there. He dug around there in a little part of and he pulled that piece of glass out. And I'm going to tell you what, it's just like I died and went to heaven when he pulled that little piece of glass out there. Such relief. Five minutes or less. He gave me relief. I've been running around for two weeks hurting and stomping it and everything else and gropping and fussing and a few other things. Huh? Draw that time. All that took was a little five-minute trip over You know, sometimes you're running around here trying to solve your own problem, trying to straighten out your life, trying to straighten this out and straighten that out. My friend God is just sitting up on the throne and said, Why don't you come unto me, all you that labor? Hey, we lay I'll give you rest. Call unto me. I'll answer thee. Show you great and mighty things. Hey, here I am. And but sometimes when you can come to God, he fixes it up in about five minutes. One good prayer. It seems like God just fixes it up. And we look around, man, I've been wasting all this time. I've been doing all this stuff. That's what David said. I will do that. I will do that. I'll do that. Finally, he said, I tell you, I'm going to quit doing anything. I'm just going to call on God. <laughs> I know this is Wednesday night, but I don't know the difference between Wednesday night and Sunday night. <laughs> David had confidence that God was the answer. He cast it, cast it thy burden. Upon the Lord, he shall sustain thee. He shall help thee. He'll take care of thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. You know what David said? David said, I'm distressed. He said, my desire is if I had the wings of a dove, I'd just fly. And he discovered he didn't have to run. All he had to do was call on God. Not only, you ever think about this, what he said to her? He said in verse number 16, As for me, I will call upon God, and the Lord shall save me. Then he said, Evening, morning, noon. He said, <laughs> he calling on God was his attitude. But not only that, it was his, his continual calling on God. He didn't just go one time. He said, I'm going to call morning, noon, night. I'm going to pray until I get some help. You know what? Sometimes we come down this altar thinking one trip is going to do it. It don't work that way. Amen. I, I, I'm probably the only one ever done this. You ever go to the doctor, they give you a bottle of pills? And they even look at you and say, now take all these. Don't take them till you get to feeling better and quit. You take them all. You ever, done, you ever have them tell you that? Are you like me? I, I'll be 71 in a few days. I'm hard-headed. I get feeling better. I think, you know what? I, I'll save them if I ever have it again. I have them. I don't have to go back to the doctor. I won't have to get another prescription. I just, I got them. He had back there. Think about half of it. Get feeling better. Quit. <laughs> about 24, 48 hours, you know what? You're sick again. Go back over to the doctor and he said, did you take all that medicine? You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> He said, what? I said, no. He said, that's what's wrong with you. Now you're going to have to start all over. Take it again. My doctor, I've been going to him 35 years. Last time I'd done that, he, I got near to the door. He said, hey, preacher. I said, what? He said, take them all. That's what he said. Looked at me. He said, take them all. I felt like, uh, I ain't no kid. But I didn't I was. Took them all. Guess what? That's better. <laughs> you think one little trip down here is going to fix you up? Some of you such bad shape. Some of you got stuff going on. But you're just going to have to keep coming and keep coming and keep coming and keep coming like a little woman in Luke 18. You should have to keep coming calling and keep coming and calling morning, noon, and night. David said, I will call it. And he said, I, I like that word that word. He said, he have delivered my soul. I know what he has. And he said in the next verse, God shall. He has and he will. He'll do it again. He'll do it again. David's desire, the stress, his desire, and his discovery. He discovered he didn't have to run. He discovered he didn't have to carry that burden. He can get it to God. And so much stuff you're carrying on, you wouldn't tell nobody in here about it. You wouldn't even tell your good pastor. You don't even, some of you don't even, even told your companion. You don't, nobody knows what's going on inside. God knows. And you know what? He's waiting right there. He's waiting right there. I'll tell you this, I'm through. My granddaughter Lexi came by a while back. She 
in college now. She's really struggling. She's making good grades, but she's struggling because if you're in college, you know what I'm talking about. You don't have classes no more. You haven't done it online. That's a different world. It's a different world. You know, it's a different world being in class. I mean, I can do class. I can go to class and learn it and get it. If I had to do it online, I just quit. I can't even hardly turn the computer on, much less do that stuff. But she struggled with all that. And she had she had some she had some little needs, you know. She came by the house, she came by the house just a few weeks ago, and she was talking, and she was sharing all that with, with Kay. I'm sitting there and she's sharing all this stuff, some of the things that she needed and, and stuff, you know, and and uh, and, and I just sat there. I didn't say a word. I mean I learned, but I don't don't say nothing. And and I just sat there and let her talk and she left. About an hour or two, she came back. Sitting on the couch, I'm sitting her, Kay sitting her, and she goes through all this stuff again. And she's telling her on and telling her all about that stuff, and all of a sudden she turned around and she said, Papa. I said, Man, I, I, I heard you. You know what she said? I'm not telling you this to hear me. I'm telling you this to help me. <laughs> what she said is, I need some money. <laughs> Help me. <laughs> you know what? God's wanting sometimes. He's just wanting us to come and pour it out. He's willing to help us. Uh, my wife, when she left, my wife said, Why didn't you why didn't you help her the first time? I said, She didn't ask me. She didn't say a word, she just told me about it. She didn't say a word. But I said the second time she asked for help. I was willing to give it to her. And sometimes we're just telling God everything instead of asking God, Lord, help me. I can't go no farther. I can't carry this no more. You've got to help me. You're going to have to pick up slack. You're going to have to do something. If you're like that tonight, you ought to come in and ask God. Amen. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.